viewers and welcome back to another exciting episode of The Social League. My name is Madeline Gassis and I will be your moderator for today's show. We all know that there is a great importance in understanding the, the knowledge of and around contraceptives amongst the youth. So today on our panel discussion we're going to dive into that. But right before we do that, we have to pay our rent. So stay tuned for our daily promo ad. Welcome back, viewers. So today on our panel, I'm joined by three lovely guests. So first on our panel, I have Dr. Amesho. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you, Marilyn. And then second, oh well, before I continue, Dr. Amesho is a medical practitioner. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes, and then we have Rejoice. Welcome, Rejoice. Thank you. Rejoice, you are the founder and the editor, uh, editor-in-chief of after break magazine correct mm -hmm. and then we have mr cliver welcome mr cliver well, thank <laughs> welcome. you very much <laughs> and mr cliver you are an advocate in the youth and community development of human rights oh you are a human rights activist and you are a advocate for the youth development is that correct youth and community development. youth and community development yeah <laughs> too many things, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so I think, w as I mentioned before, we are going to be diving into the topic of contraceptives around or amongst the youth. So I just want to read uh, a bit about it. So Namibia has a population with two thirds below the age of 35 years. And the national teenage pregnancy rate stands at 19% which means that about every fifth woman aged from 15 to 19 began childbearing. Imagine that. But with that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. So I would like to ask, um, doctor, do you think that the youth um, is educated enough about contraceptives? Uh, Marilyn, thank you for the question. Well, um, to start with, what is birth control? Is mm. the question. Well, according to scholars um, who are well versed on the topic of, of, of gynecology and obstetrics, they've, dis uh, they've described or defined birth control to be a, a method that is used um, to prevent unwanted pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And this means that one can engage in sexual activity without the fear of having um, an unwanted pregnancy. Right? And um, to get back to your question, um, I feel like we don't really have um, much. We don't have much education in Namibia on the topic of, of contraception, or if the, or if the education is there, or rather the information is there, mm -hmm. then it is not. Um, it is not well up. It's not taken up by the by the youth, right? Mm -hmm. And or perhaps there is information, but then there's no access to the information. Mm -hmm. It could also be that um, the information is there, but maybe the, the youth are perhaps ignorant. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So we need to, if we're going to find a solution, we need to walk around all three areas of uh, providing the information, making, the, making sure the information is accessible, mm -hmm. and also um, trying to give awareness to the youth to, to, to receive this information mm -hmm. and, and, and use the contraceptives. Oh, okay, yeah. thank you. Rejoice? Um, well, technically speaking, if we're talking about the Namibian youth, I personally feel like we're not educated mm -hmm. on contraceptives. Looking at the statistics that we as a nation um, recorded earlier this year of around about 3,600 teenage pregnancies, mm -hmm. I personally feel like we're not as educated as we're supposed to be. Mm, thank you. Mr. Clavert? Well, uh, I'll probably um, um, disagree with the doctor a little bit. Uh, okay. Um, and also I agree with the doctor um, regarding the information being available. Mm -hmm. um, myself, um, I think one of my hats, um, and a, I'm a president for a youth-led organization, or a network rather, that's in more than 24 countries in Africa, mm -hmm. and I'm the president of the Namibian chapter, which is called AFRIAN. Mm -hmm. And AFRIAN stands for African Youth and Adolescent Network on Population and Development. And um, the whole mandate of AFRIAN is advocacy around access to information, access to uh, 
equitable and quality health services mm -hmm. um, for young people and adolescents. So uh, to answer the question in regards to uh, the information or around um, birth control, is it available to young mm -hmm. people? Is it accessible to young people? Yes, I'll say yes and no. Okay. Um, accessible when it comes to urban areas. For example, in Namibia, I'll make mm -hmm. an example. Since the inception of the curriculum, which we call the comprehensive sexuality, next, not sexual, a lot of people really uh, misconcept this word, sexuality education, because mm -hmm. it's talking about your bodily autonomy. Mm -hmm. Um, since the inception of, of this curriculum, which obviously it was, it came derived from the commitment that the government has made at ESA level, which ESA level is Eastern Southern Africa, mm -hmm. and all 24 countries, Namibia being one of them, made commitments on that um, more than 10 years ago, that this information should, or this education, uh, uh, or this curriculum should be comprehensively packaged mm -hmm. and delivered to the learners and the youth in the school. Mm -hmm. And since the inception of this curriculum, we have seen a decrease, a major decrease in many regions. Ohangwena is one of the regions that I can, I can refer to that really, really the teenage pregnancy has gone down. Mm -hmm. We have seen an increase in knowledge, an increase in making decisions when it comes to young people. So, yes, it is available, but mm -hmm. again, uh, it is available, accessible. I mean, it's accessible in many ways. I, I myself, I'm the captain of the condomized, it's called the National Condomized Campaign that is partnered by the Ministry of Health, UNFPA being, uh, being the supporter, AFRIA, NAPA, and uh, Ministry of Youth. Mm -hmm. Again, this we make contraceptives available to young people out of school and sometimes in schools and also through the comprehensive sexuality education that is obviously uh, spearheaded in school by Staff for Life. It's one of the civil society organizations. Mm -hmm. But because of uh, harmful cultural norms and traditional norms, we have that pushback uh, in the communities. Mm -hmm. And this is why today we are, if you look at the, uh, because of the lockdowns that were initiated last year due to COVID-19, we have a lot of young people that fell pregnant. And these young people were at home, mind you. So because of these cultural norms and still the conversation that is not really relaxed it's quite between taboo, child yes. and, mm. and parent-child, you know, the parent-child conversation, I, I think there is where we can say uh, the ac accessibility, mm -hmm. uh, the knowledge, mm -hmm. the not only for young people, but uh, for, for parents as parents well, because as well, yeah. sometimes you have a young person that's educated in the house, but mm -hmm. you have an ignorant parent Parents. that does mm -hmm. not want to have that conversation to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, let me park this for now, so before I take <laughs> out your... <laughs> yeah. Okay, you, you mentioned something about uh, um, accessibility. Do you really think that, that it's accessible? Considering that in schools, kids are being taught not to have sex, opposed to being given all the information of and around sex. So do you, do you think that, uh, um, what, what role do you think the schools play when it comes to um, giving learners or the youth information um, about contraceptives, and basically teaching them and educating them about these things. Because at the end of the day, education is key, regardless of the fact that people want to um, suppress certain things and keep kids from certain things, uh, opposed to giving them all the information that they need, mm -hmm. you know, so that they are aware. So do you think, what role do you think schools play in this? Through the curriculum, mm -hmm. the, uh, we call them life skills teachers yes. in the schools. Yes. Their job, as instructed even by the curriculum and also by the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. is to give the right information mm -hmm. so that learners are able to make informed decisions. decisions. So to give the right information in regards to when mm -hmm. to choose to, have, uh, to, to engage in sexual activities mm -hmm. and when you choose to engage in sexual activities, what you must look out for. 
for you. And the right age mm. and the right time. Mm. So this whole information is accessible to the learners in the schools. Mm -hmm. And educating the learners that, do I really have to make the choice of really engaging sexual activities now or can I wait until I'm at the right age? Mm. But in you, the reason why the curriculum inf gives the information to, so that learners are able to make informed decisions is because you will have learners that are living in certain areas in the country that are be living between a rock and a hard place mm. whereby, unfortunately, they, are they, 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 they engage in transactional sex because they need to survive. You find in certain regions that I, want, I don't want to mention in, where this young girl is the one that's the, br the breadwinner for mm -hmm. the house. Mm -hmm. And it's in Namibia here. So you give her this information also for her to be able to make a decision to say, can I have a negotiating factor here instead of engaging mm -hmm. um, in sexual activities? So in regards to the, uh, accessibility, mm -hmm. I think uh, the Ministry of Education is, is, has been doing enough justice, uh, um, or good justice rather, mm -hmm. maybe not enough, but mm -hmm. good justice rather, to make sure that there is really access to this information. Uh, thank you. Rejoice? Um, I will agree with you, Mr. Clivert, mm -hmm. um, but I think as much as schools do teach us, um, when you go back home, parents hardly speak to their kids about this. So it's either they're going to do it behind their back mm -hmm. or they're not going to do it at all because they're scared of their parents or what they're going to say about it. Because um, I think in the African culture, talking about such is not for kids at all. It's, it's a thing of, you know, only big people are allowed to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Doctor? No, I also agree with Mr. Clivet and Mr. Joyce uh, with regards to what they said. Um, like I said, um, he did mention that there's a, the su a subject called life skills. Mm -hmm. But I feel like um, with regards to teaching in school, that there should be enough emphasis put on sex education in the school as much as they put emphasis on, for example, mathematics, biology. Mm -hmm. You know, they should treat it with the same respect. And I feel like in the schools, um, sex education is treated more like on the periphery. They mm -hmm. do teach it, but not, like I said, with enough emphasis. Yes. So I think our teachers and our community members, also like she said, our parents at home need mm. to actively engage in talking about sex and making sure that um, the youth understand what is going on, mm. you know? Because there's, I mean, there's a difference. You just teach something at school with no emphasis. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you teach it, but people don't really, like I said, the uptake is probably low because they don't really understand mm -hmm. the, the implications around it. Oh, so yeah, okay. it should also not just be in, in the school, at mm. home also the parents need to actively engage in talking about sex, um, when they see maybe they, they, their, their children become teenagers, mm -hmm. then they need to bring in the talk of, of um, sex, like he said, um, so that they can make a well-informed decision. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, now I wanted to ask, what age, we spoke about life skills, yeah. at what age do you think is the right age for, for, for children to be taught about contraceptives? Yeah. Well, I feel like uh, there shouldn't really be, um, I think, um, like, w w adolescence is when a child is from 10 years old, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like when the, when the parents notice that maybe the child is um, becoming mature or, you know, if they see a change in behavior, then they can already start engaging, engaging. In, in, in the talk. Um, I mean, like, um, Rejoice said that parents think it's a taboo, you know, mm -hmm. but it's more risky for you not to talk about it with a child than to actually just... Um, have the courage mm -hmm. to speak to the child about this, about these contraceptives and everything mm -hmm. so that by the time they're teenagers even they already know what to do so that by the time they start engaging in sexual activities they will do something with with some you know some backup knowledge yeah. knowing what they're doing More and how informed. to protect themselves exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i think it's not really about a certain age it mm -hmm. depends <coughs> what circumstances are Mm. Yeah. Visualize. Um, I also think that there is really no specific age mm -hmm. because sometimes we find that doctors give um, um, young girls contraceptives mm. to regulate their periods, which can be at the age of twelve. So I think um, that only the doctor will be able to make a choice mm. to make sure that um, they do not potentially disrupt the young girl's um, cycle. Cycle. Okay. Mr. Clivert? What Rejoice is talking about, she's talking about the age of consent mm -hmm. that doctors are aware of, uh, mm -hmm. aware, aware of as well. Um, 
And in the schools, we have what they call the school wellness policy. Mm -hmm. And the school wellness policy mm -hmm. um, informs the age of concern. It talks about the age of concern. Mm -hmm. Part of the, uh, the commitment that was made by the governments, the, the 24 governments. And the age of consent gives consent in regards to information, gives consent when it comes to HTS, HIV testing and uh, services or HIV testing and counseling. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that age of consent is 13. So 13. 13. So that's what's regarded. At mm -hmm. a, I will never say that it's the right age to give information mm -hmm. because we have had, in our, we've seen in our papers where we had nine year olds, 10 year olds falling pregnant. Mm -hmm. So you cannot really say that uh, it's at this age, but 13 is the age of concern that at this age, as a young girl, as a young man, I am allowed to make a decision to get tested. Mm -hmm. I'm allowed to make a decision to have access to mm -hmm. contraceptives because I feel I am in the right age or I'm ready to engage in sexual activities. Now, that's age of concern where you as a child, uh, as a young person, you, you are given that platform. However, with, uh, uh, at 13, obviously, with uh, supervisory or with the consent also of, of, of the parents as well. Mm -hmm. But it should come from yourself that you are allowed to, 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 to access these services. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Some parents would probably say, or I've, I've actually heard it myself, some parents believe that um, if you give your child early access to contraceptives, it could make them more promiscuous or it could make them you know, start doing these activities behind their bags. Um, what's your stance on that? You know, <laughs> this is, um, it's a very uh, difficult question, or, but yet a very, a, a very good question as well, because, and, and the answer I'll give to this is that, um, I think uh, as parents, um, parents must be more concerned about their daughters and their sons having access to information mm -hmm. and to, to the services that are provided by the government and concern also about having conversations. Mm -hmm. Why I'm saying this is because and this is a fact, whether we want to believe it or not, you can never stop a child from having, whether a girl or a, a young man or a young girl from having multiple partners or even engaging in sexual activities for that matter. Mm -hmm. We have seen in many schools, and I will say it here on this platform, where uh, uh, girls and guys are making appointments that in this period, I'm free and you are free, let's meet at the toilet. Oh, wow. That's without the knowledge of the parents or the teachers as well. These things are happening. Mm -hmm. They are happening. We need to understand that they are happening. So uh, the word promiscuous is, it's, well, <laughs> I, I, I don't want even to answer that because it's, yeah. it's, it's a decision that one has to make, make yes. uh, 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 him or herself. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't think we can blame it on the access to information. Mm -hmm. I think we have to thank our government that it, it has made that decision and had that conversation to actually mm -hmm. uh, uh, agree to the commitment of providing access to learners in the schools and, and, and young people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Rejoice. Um, I agree with Mr. Clive that um, parents don't really know what their kids have to. So I think the um, best thing for parents to do is just to make sure that their kids really do know that, you know, they are contraceptors and this is how you can use them. Mm. And yeah, because you can't really know what your kid is up to. Up to. Mm -hmm. Okay, doctor. Mm. Well, I feel like parents of um, most parents are, are probably defensive because they want to protect their children, which mm. makes sense. But also we need to, to be careful not to be subjective on the matter because we need to think about um, the implications, the long-term implications. Mm. I mean, for example, if a girl falls pregnant or even if one of either a girl or a boy contracts HIV, that's a, a long-term um, implication mm -hmm. on, the, on the child's life. And therefore parents need to really um, think about you know, not being judgmental and mm -hmm. talking to, to their children. But also, I feel like sometimes maybe parents think that if they speak to the children about sexual activities and contraceptives, mm -hmm. then maybe 
they may be misinterpreted as giving them the, the go ahead mm. to do it, do you understand? Yeah. So maybe that is why they're reluctant to, 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 to engage in such talks, but it's, it's really important, like Mr. Clivet and Mr. Joyce both mentioned here, mm. that we really need to make sure that we, we, we engage the children because, mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, we want them to make well-informed decisions. Decisions. It's yeah. exactly a point that I wanted to emphasize on because depriving them from certain information just puts them in the position to make decisions where they don't have complete knowledge around Uninformed decisions. Mm. Uninformed mm. decisions. Mm. Thank you, mm. So uninformed decisions. Mm. The, you, are, you, are making, you are making choices that you don't know could harm you in the future because mm. getting pregnant at the age of 15 it's not ideal traumatizing yeah. it's, it's mm. very traumatizing and it forces okay. you to become an adult before your time exactly but another thing that i also wanted to ask doctor mm. was um other than um what are reasons that teenagers could um, get contraceptives for other than preventing pregnancies well, uh, most times they also they also receive um, contraceptives for 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 acne because mm -hmm. I mean it's like ad adolescents get into puberty and they start breaking out. So we usually control we usually give them um, the contraceptive to control the hormones mm -hmm. to ba to balance the hormones and just to reduce the the the, the acne. Oh, okay, yeah, that's also another reason. Okay, yeah. and another thing that I also wanted to ask was what are some of the side effects or disadvantages side effects that uh, contraceptives can have on a teenager specifically okay well it depends because it's quite a, a, a wide range of contraceptives that are available mm -hmm. we have um for example from um the use of condoms we have the patch we have the implanon which they put inside on, on your arm mm -hmm. and then we have the the month the the internal Injection. monthly injections mm -hmm. yeah so side effects can range depending on your on your system of course from headaches mm -hmm. to nausea um can also other side effects can also um be weight gain mm -hmm. which i mean some people don't want to gain weight especially teenagers you know how they are yeah so that those are some of the side effects and also mood swings can also be a side effect of of, of contraceptives mm -hmm. but um it's usually just in the first few months mm -hmm. and then uh, after after a while the body should be able to adjust to adjust yeah okay um are there ever um <coughs> people who come and want to use uh, let's say the pearl for example mm -hmm. and then they use the pearl and then they come back and then they say no this is actually not working for me <laughs> can i use something yes, else actually i've had uh, when i was working when i was still working in state mm -hmm. we've had several patients who would come in um, let's say they put the, the implant on which you, in, which you insert and then they come back, they're like, no, doctor, please remove this thing. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal for me. I want to try something else. Oh, okay. You know, so we just advise them and we, 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 we see what works, what works best for them. But usually mm -hmm. before we, we give them the contraceptive, we give them the advantages, disadvantages so that they make a well-informed decision mm -hmm. and choose what they think is ideal for them. Oh, but you okay. do get those, those um, some patients who do come back and, come back, and, okay. and request for something else. Oh, okay, thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we have definitely reached uh, the end of our panel discussion. Um, if, if you have any final words that you would like to give to our viewers <coughs> or to the youth that might be watching um, this episode today, um, <coughs> Doctor, maybe we can start with you. Uh, well, and final words, um, mainly for me, I think it's just for, for the teachers and the parents especially to start with, that please um, don't be reluctant to, to talk to the youth. Um, uh, be be free to speak to them and give them the information that they need and also the youth should not be shy mm. don't be shy especially when you're doing it, things behind your parents back for example um, read the information find out what you need to use and 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 use what you have at your disposal mm. and, and in that way you can protect yourself because I mean um, we all have goals and dreams and you don't want that to be interrupted by anything mm. um, before you get to your to your to your finish line thank you yeah Rejoice. Um, I just want to say that we as a youth shouldn't be shy. Um, <coughs> if we think our parents are not talking to us about it, I think we should bring it up to them. Mm. Or we can just simply grab your mom and go see your doctor, you mm. know. Or go see your doctor by yourself. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Mm. So, yeah. Doctors are very welcoming. <laughs> <laughs> Does the climate? Well, uh, what I want to say to um, uh, Dr. Josephine already spoke to the parents and the teachers, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm very happy you brought that out. Uh, but for the young people, mm -hmm. our government has done, the Namibian government, uh, I commend the Namibian government, it has done a lot to make sure that really 
uh, or to try and make sure. Mm. Uh, I'll say I'll use the word try because I don't. I feel we still have a lot to do. Mm. But for for the for the young people out there, please, 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 um, get access to that information or access the information that is provided to you. Mm. Do not be ignorant about it. Do not um, be afraid to go out and get tested. Mm. And yeah. And get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Guys, get vaccinated. <laughs> get vaccinated. <laughs> yeah. <Yes. laughs> well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I think today on our panel, very important points that we made was that educate yourself or t grasp the information that's to your ac that's, uh, that's accessible to you. You know, make informed decisions. Don't be ignorant. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much um, to the panelists that joined me today. And thank you so much to our viewers who tuned into today's episode. We will definitely see you guys next week. Same time, same place.